ಅಕ್ಷರ ಸಮಾಮನಾಯಮಧಿಗಮ್ಯ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರಾತ್ ಕೃತ್ಸ್ನ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಪಾಣಿನಯ ನಮ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಹೋಮೇಶ್ ಟು ಪಾಣಿನಿ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಸೇಜ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾಣಿನಿ ಹೂ ಲಾಂಟ್ ಅಧಿಗಮ್ಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಲಾಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟೂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ರಿಸೀವ್ಡ್ ಅಕ್ಷರ ಸಮಾಮನಾಯ ದ ಸೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಫೋನೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಫಂಡಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹೂಮ್ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶಿವ ಕೃತ್ಸ್ನ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ಸೊ ಬೈ ಹೂಮ್ ದ ಎಂಟೈಯರ್ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಆರ್ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎಂಟೈಯರಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕೆನ್ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಪಾಣಿನಯ ನಮ ಟು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಪಾಣಿನಿ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಒಬ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ನಮಸ್ ಸೊ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಎ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ that why are we sitting here uh, recently there was a media hype of a news about rishiraj popat uh, the headline said that 2500 years old puzzle solved so rishiraj popat is a um, phd scholar in cambridge university so who was doing some research on a particular sutra a particular problem related to ashtadhyayi ashtadhyayi is the name of the work the grammar book which panini has written i'll speak more about it so he took a particular problem and then in his own way he showed like he has solved a 2500 years old puzzle uh this has been disproved and then uh, there are many other scholars who are uh extremely dedicated to panini sastadhyay so they have uh, gone through the entire thesis they have explained and then they have declared that it's a very tall claim and uh, it's uh, it's it's fake so and the whole traditional um scholars and all those who have dedicated their lives for 50 years 60 years to panini sastadhyay have disproved of this thesis but one good thing which has happened is that it has created a certain amount of curiosity among the mass that what exactly is sastadhyay what is panini and then why uh, such a problem existed which uh, uh, for which there was no solution so he claims that there was no solution but in the tradition there has been lots of interpretations and um, lot of people who have tried to show uh, the problems issues related to that particular sutra but let me tell you that <coughs> the general mass to whom the news has reached can never in their entire life have a little understanding of what the problem is because it's a very difficult text highly technical text panini sastadhyay even all those who have been studying sanskrit grammar for years for them also it is difficult to understand what's the problem okay forget about the general mass and all those who have no idea about what is panini what is his sastadhyay how it is structured what technique panini employed in uh, making this text so it's very very difficult so today what i will be doing here is that these are the questions which i will be taking off little bit of the story of panini i don't know it's uh, every time okay so this is what i will be uh doing uh, today i'll try my best to explain you in a simple language what panini is uh who is panini uh there is a, a story in uh somadeva's katha sarit sagar uh, which says that uh, panini and katyayana they were batch met to rishis katyayana was very sharp and panini was a dull witted person and he was always getting humiliated in the class and one day uh, 
out of humiliation so he decided to go to himalaya and do tapasya so he went and then he did tapasya he contemplated on shiva and shiva got pleased with him and then appeared before him and then played his tiny damaru for 14 times and the 14 sounds which emerged from his tiny damaru so panini uh, uh, took hold of that and then created his ashtadhyay so that's what is the story and there are many other stories which are related to panini uh, found in the tradition and uh, where did panini live if today if we look at Panini's village, which is known as Salatura. So it's somewhere in the Lahore uh, district in uh, Pakistan. And uh, uh, other Chinese scholars like Wen Sang and It Singh, so these scholars also visited Panini as place and they studied in Nalanda, Panini Shastadhyay, they studied. They also have their own record of like what they have heard from the people there about Panini. Uh, but mostly Panini's grammar, after Panini systematized the whole Sanskrit Vyakarana, so no other grammarian could succeed or uh, you know surpass him. Till that Panini is at the front. So uh, there are many systems of grammar. Uh, it is not that Panini was the only grammarian. Panini himself has mentioned about uh, 10 grammarians whom he pays respect in his Ashtadhyay, accepting their views and then putting his own views. So uh, that's how uh, we see Panini uh, paying homage to uh, 10 previous grammarians, but in the tradition, there are mentioned about more than 85 grammarians who existed before Panini. It is not that grammar didn't exist before Panini. Grammar did exist. Panini systematized it. And the way he systematized it, the way he uh, you know, uh, prepared the whole text, the technique which he followed, the whole, whole world today is amazed at the whole text technique that Panini has used in the composition of Ashtadhyay. So uh, what is Ashtadhyay? But before that, Ashtadhyay is not the only work of Panini. So there is um, Ashtadhyay. There are some texts appended to it, which is known as Dhatu Patha and Gana Patha. There is another text called Paniniya Shiksha which is also uh, accredited to Panini, but no one is sure whether Panini wrote it or someone wrote it in the name of Panini. There is another text which is a poem. It's not a grammatical text. It's known as Jambavati Vijay. So that's, uh, that's a poem accredited to Panini, but again, no one knows whether Panini wrote it or someone uh, wrote it in the name of Panini. That's the only poetical text, but rest of the uh, works are related to uh, Sanskrit grammar. So what is Ashtadhyay about? Now Ashtadhyay uh, is uh, the text, the name of the text that Panini, where Panini has enumerated the entire Sanskrit language. Why is it called Ashtadhyay? Because there are Ashta, Ashta means eight, Adhyaya means chapter. So there are eight chapters. So that's why it is known as Ashtadhyay. And what is the content of the Ashtadhyay? The content is the entire Sanskrit Vyakarana or the grammar. Though we are using the word grammar for Vyakarana, but Vyakarana is not grammar. Vyakarana has a very deeper meaning. Basically grammar uh, has many rules and regulations about the language which teaches, but Vyakarana is analysis. So it analyzes every word, every sentence, and every word it analyzes by splitting it, separation. So Vyakaroti means separating, splitting it. That's how it does the analysis. So what is the split about? The split basically is about the Prakriti and Pratyaya. So Prakriti means the base word, 
the bass sound whether it is a uh, nominal bass or a verbal bass so that's the prakriti then you have additional components uh, which join with the prakriti in order to form words these are known as pratyaya so by splitting by separating the prakriti from pratyaya and then again analyzing the different pratyayas so it arrives at the formed word the right word the sadhu shabda so the whole aim of vyakarana is to arrive at the sadhu shabda the right word to be used in the language right so panini sastadhyay is the content is the vyakarana the analysis of the entire language it's a generative grammar it shows the derivational processes of the words the sadhu shabdas not the sadhu shabdas but a sadhu shabdas the incorrect words which cannot be used or should not be used in the language or was never used by the people who spoke the language so those are automatically one comes to know that okay these are the incorrect words the correct word is this by following the derivational process so before we enter into uh, i'll give you the example of certain words how panini derives it is very logical very mathematical but we need to look at the structure of the ashtadhyay so now the whole content of ashtadhyay is given in a form called sutra okay sutra which usually means uh, uh, a thread in the normal language it is thread but panini panini's use of sutra or a sutra is a style of composition it's very very unique to india and very very unique to sanskrit there is no other language there is no other civilization no other culture no other nation which has a sutra style of composition you can very proudly say to anyone that india has contributed a style of composition called the sutra style of composition so what is this sutra style of composition there are like you must have heard patanjali's yoga sutra or vatsyayana's kama sutra or there is dharma sutras vashishta dharma sutra so uh this the sutra style so we need to understand what exactly is sutra and the different kinds of sutras which panini has employed in his technique in his ashtadhyay so uh, let's look at um sutra <coughs> okay so if you look at ashtadhyay and its structure so you have the sutras and approximately 4000 so the exact number of sutras will be 3995 sutras all together in ashtadhyay and then the chapter division is all the 3995 sutras are divided into eight chapters each chapter again is further divided into four sections okay so like this you have got 32 sections eight chapters 3995 sutras so what is a sutra so it says alpaksharam asandigtham saravat vishvato mukham astubham anavadyam cha sutram sutra vidu vidu so let me explain you word by word alpaksharam so a sutra style of composition the sutra has to have minimum number of syllables and the vyakaranas who write sutras they take care you know for them if they can save half a syllable forget about a half syllable half a matra if they save there is a joy in them so it said that ardha matra laghavena putrutsavam manyanti vyakarana it means like uh, the vyakaranas the grammarians have the joy of you know like if someone is having a male child or female child or any child at home okay so they say i mean there is a joy in the home whole family that a child is born so a vyakarana feels the same joy of the birth of a child if he has saved half a matra so to that extent 
द प्रिसीजन इज मेंटेन्ड इन द सूत्र स्टाइल ऑफ कंपोजिशन राइट अल्पाक्षरम देन असंदिग्धम दैट एवरी सूत्र हैज टू बी फ्री फ्रॉम डाउट द वायाकरण हैज टू बी सो केयरफुल दैट ही इज नॉट क्रिएटिंग एनी डाउट बाय गिविंग ए स्ट्रक्चर टू द सूत्र so that means like he has to have the whole picture in the mind and therefore if anyone wants to learn ashtadhyay and learn about the language through ashtadhyay and then why the tradition uh, insisted that one has to rote learn the ashtadhyay because the entire ashtadhyay all the 3995 sutras have to be once in one's memory so if one wants to go through ashtadhyay is thing so why it is so you will understand it after some times so asandigdham that it must be free from any doubt any ambiguity saravat saravat means like it's it's meaningful but meaningful in what sense that every sutra is containing within itself the essence of many things saravat that's what it it's meaning making meaning to others because it contains the essence of many things then you have vishwato mukha there is universal means there is a wider applicability a single sutra has many dimensions so there is no stand alone sutra in panini it's like every sutra will be connected with many other sutras with the help of many other sutras so in groups they work so vishwato mukham so they have many dimensions astobham stobha means a uh, uh, halt like you pause while chanting when you take a pause there are some interjections some exclamations where you introduce so you take a pause then you continue okay astobha means there should not be any pause any halt any discontinuity there has to be an uninterrupted continuity in the sutras so no, no one will say like wow this is not right so it should have come before it should have come later so in the sutra style of composition it doesn't happen there is an uninterrupted continuity right from the beginning to the end astobham anavadyam now today the whole uh, issue is that someone has found a fault in panini a fault in the tradition fault in the katyayana in katyayana so who is katyayana i'll i'll come to that so it says anavadyam sutra there is there will be nothing about which some criticism can be made this is anavadya so it's flawless that's how the tradition paid respect to the sutrakaras that they have made flawless uh, uh, compositions right so panini gave this ashtadhyay so we don't know exactly the exact date because of lack of evidence proper evidence uh, no one has yet fixed panini's date though it the counting starts from 800 bc to 5th century bc so just imagine 5th century bc there was this person panini without the help of any hardware no writing system no writing materials or there might be something which existed we don't know because of lack of evidence so he has given a perfect programming a kind of software ashtadhyay works like a software programming so he has given this programming to us so then the entire sanskrit language is preserved and then its purity is maintained till date and it facilitates because of panini's programming so it facilitates creation of new words to meet the challenges of the new age okay so if panini was not there it would have been difficult to create new words so it would have got stagnant somewhere so there is an uninterrupted continuity of the language in creating new words at every age every time every day almost you have many words which are created by people for the use so now we come to another point 
what are the different sutras, different types of sutras that one finds in Panini. So in Panini you find Sanya, Paribhasha, then you find Vidhi, Niyama, Atidesha, Adhikara. These are the six different types of sutras. Now this is where the difficulty lies that if anyone wants to understand Panini, first understand the, these different types of sutras. So, um, uh, for example, like if anyone wants to have an entry into Panini, in uh, 1997, this is my first book. Immediately after my studentship, I wrote this book, but this book is in Odia language. So, there are 256 technical terms which I have explained in this book. Without understanding this 250 odd, technical terms, it's extremely difficult to have an entry into Panini. Okay. So if anyone wants to have entry into Panini and understand how Panini functions, the first thing is to contemplate on the technical terms. So it's like, then you can compare, like suppose you take this Sanya, Parivhasa, Vidhi, Niyama, Atidesa, Adhikara, these six types of sutras. If anyone has little knowledge about programming, software programming, how do you write a language, machine language, you can map it. Sanya means definition. First you have to define what you are going to say. Okay. For example, the very first sutra of Pani, the very first sutra of Pani. So, so I say like if Indian, anyone who is in India, born in India, has love for India, love for the language, should at least know the first mantra of Rig Veda and should know the first sutra of Panini. Okay. So the first sutra of Panini is Now, <coughs> this is Vriddhi Radhaich. Now, to a great extent, some of you can grasp the word Vriddhi. The rest, what it is, it will not make any sense. Okay. Now, this is a Sanya Sutra. What, what does it mean? So Panini explains, you have three words, Pradhi, A, Light. So Panini is defining a Sanya called Vriddhi. He calls it as Vriddhi. So instead of mentioning certain letters, he creates abbreviations. Abbreviation is a great technique which we will learn today. How Panini has made abbreviations to use so then he can compose the sutras. Now, Aath and Aich. Aath refers to A. Okay. So when Panini says, Panini could have said A, ah, he could have saved the. But why he is using the Aath? There are also like, everything has a logic in Panini Shastadhyay. So when Panini says A, ah, there are various aspects of A. Ah. A ah is not just A. Ah. It can be Udatta, A, ah, Udatta in a high pitch. It can be in a low pitch. It can be in the ascending and descending pitch. Okay. It can be plutta also, like it can be prolonged. So there are many different varieties of the sound A itself. But when Panini says A, uses the word ta, it is restricting A into just its original form, A. 
no other varieties will be considered here art right then ait ait is a is an abbreviation so in order to understand what an abbreviation is let's pause here and go to another section to understand how panini has created these abbreviations so then he could form the sutras very precisely and uh, let me tell you that to give you a little introduction very brief introduction to ashtadhyayi to make it understandable or at least if you can understand a little bit it needs a series of such introductory classes not in one class it's not possible i'm just giving you a glimpse of that so where should we go we will go here to the maheshwar sutra <coughs> so right in the beginning i told you that panini contemplated on shiva and shiva played his damaru 14 times and then this 14 sounds emerged and panini made the basis of his ashtadhyayi this 14 sutras so which are these sutras ai un rulruk e ong ai ouch hayavarat learn nyamangananam jabai ghadadash jaba ghadadash kapha chatha chatta tav kapai shashashar hal these are the 14 sutras and from these 14 sutras okay so when uh, uh, a little digression like when uh, our children are admitted in the sri aurobindo ashram school at the age of 3 uh, 3 and 1/2 the first thing they teach is the maheshwar sutra like they teach them like everyone knows this maheshwar sutra so they will have to repeat it and then why it is important you will understand it because this is the basis of panini's ashtadhyayi if you do not understand this you can never understand panini's ashtadhyayi and how panini has made so precise that using this 3995 sutras one can derive one can derive more than 300 millions of words which is the wealth of vocabulary in panini okay in panini's following panini's ashtadhyayi panini's system so panini comes in say 5th century bc 200 years later comes another grammarian vararuchi do panini and vararuchi they they were uh, described as uh, students of one rishi varsha and they were batchmates but historically it's difficult to prove so katyayana comes after 200 years and whatever he finds that it is not covered by panini many words many vocabularies which have come into existence so he again writes another 4000 supplementary uh, statements and then supplements it to panini's ashtadhyayi then comes patanjali patanjali the one who has written the yoga sutra so <coughs> sometimes it is very confused whether it is the same patanjali or a different patanjali but so far the acceptance is that it is the same patanjali who has given to us both the yoga sutras and the mahabhashya so what is mahabhashya mahabhashya is the greatest greatest commentary on panini panini and katyayana would not have been known without patanjali because it is patanjali through whom we come to know about panini sutras and katyayana's vartikas so when panini's text ashtadhyayi the sentences are called sutras katyayana's sentences are known as vartika vartika means whatever is not yet spoken is spoken about is extended these are extended versions of sutras you can say then comes Pan, uh, patanjali who has written the mahabhashya so about mahabhashya it is said that maha bhashyam va pathaniyam maha rajyam va palaniyam so studying mahabhashya is compared to ruling over a great kingdom so that is the kind of uh, you know heaviness that one feels while entering into mahabhashya but another interesting thing about mahabhashya is that 
the language is so simple so logical like you you feel uh, you know like as if you understand patanjali's mahabhasha if you read with a little bit knowledge of sanskrit you can understand most of the sentences the technical part you may not understand but rest of the parts you will understand and very logically he puts it and patanjali is very humorous also you find lot of humor in patanjali's mahabhasha and can you imagine that 3995 sutras out of which patanjali has commented only on 17 sutras so 100 sutras 1700 sutras how many volumes will be patanjali what will be the size of patanjali's mahabhashya patanjali's mahabhashya was composed or you know when he he created it he created it in 85 volumes patanjali's mahabhashya is 85 volumes and each volume is known as ahnika 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 means it was composed in a single day and one is supposed to learn it in a single day ahnika that's how he used to teach his disciples and it's only on 1700 sutras of manini not 3995 okay just that's that's the uh, volume of uh, patanjali's mahabhashya so now <clears throat> coming to this aspect so every vyakarana every vyakarana or anyone any student of vyakarana has to begin with this Maheshwara Sutra, the Shiva Sutra. In Panini's tradition, therefore, these three, Panini, Katyayana and Patanjali, so together they are known as the Trinity, the Trimuni. It's therefore known as not Panini Vyakarana, but Trimuni Vyakarana. Panini alone will not make sense. Katyayana has to be there. Patanjali has to be there. So it's a Trimuni Parampara. It's a Trimuni Vyakarana. not panini vyakarana not uh, katyayana vyakarana not patanjali vyakarana separately yet all the three are as if you know merged into one consciousness that is panini consciousness therefore when you say panini tradition it is the trimuni tradition now what is this shiva sutra this basically has all the fundamental sounds and this is known as technically it is known as akshara samamanaya this is the name of the alphabet system in sanskrit this is known as akshara akshara means all the letters the basic sounds samamanaya means bringing together putting together arranging them together in a logical way akshara samamanaya so in the akshara samamanaya you have got all the basic sounds of sanskrit but instead of putting it like a a e e u u the way we are familiar with so panini puts it in this form in the sutra form there are 14 sutras compared to the 14 sounds of damaru of shiva ai un this is the first sutra rulruk so you see a mark it's rounded so that mark is a is a letter which will not be counted while counting the letters okay but it has to be there why it has to be there because it serves lots of grammatical purposes in panini sastadhyay if those marks are not there if you remove those marks then panini will not make sense at all lot of grammatical works panini achieves by putting this suppose he says if you find a particular application a particular rule is not applied not getting applied to a particular word or in a particular condition so then panini will explain oh go back you will find a uh, na attached to it at the end so, and i have explained it to you if the na is attached so in this condition this sutra will not be applicable if ta is attached so you see like i own rulruk if ka is attached there is a particular grammatical function wherever panini has 
go to it, same grammatical function will be fulfilled, will be worked out. So that's how these are known as anubandha. Anubandha. Anubandha means something, something which is added. Anubandha, added later. Anu means after. Bandha means attached. And these are known as the it letters. Technically, they are known as it letters. It means they are to be deleted. They are to be removed. Okay. So now, when they are removed, <coughs> it letters are removed. So, Panini uses a word lopa. These are the lopa. It letters are tasya lopa. It says tasya lopa means it has to be considered as lopa means lost. Now what is, so if something is lost, so how it is going to be functional? So Panini again explains what is lopa. Lopa means, say Panini says adarshanam lopa. Adarshanam lopa means something which is lopa is invisible, but its force is there, it will work, its force will work, but it is invisible. So the same, because nothing can be deleted, as per Panini, nothing can be deleted, you can look at the technology, so you may feel that I have deleted all my secret messages from WhatsApp, it's not possible. I have deleted all my files from the computer, from my hard disk. Now I am safe. No, you are not safe. Nothing can be deleted. So once a vibration is created, it's permanent. It's there. There will be something which will retrieve it. So Panini says, it's just invisible. Consider it as Adarshanam Lopa. Lopa means what you consider as no, is not there. It's just invisible. But technique can make it visible because its force works, because it's a vibration which is created, it will work. So in Panini, you will find also like another interesting thing, the philosophy of life, the philosophy of creation, and the philosophy of grammar, language, and the technique, all integrated into one. That's the beauty of Panini. So now here, you see Panini makes around 43 Pratyahara, abbreviation called Pratyahara. Okay, so now in order to understand the sutra here, now you find one pratyahara, aich. So how do we understand what is aich in this sutra? So to the, for that, we need to come back here. Now aich, see for example like Panini creates pratyahara, how? He takes a letter, say for example he takes a, then he takes the letter ch, ach. So he makes a pratyahara, ach. Now all that comes in between a and cha, they are included in that. So which are the letters which are coming between ach? When we say ach, so comes a, e, u, r, r, and a, o, i, o. That means all the vowel sounds. So instead of saying all the vowel, swaravarnas or swaraha, Panini will simply say ach in ashtadhyay. So in Ashtadhyay, wherever you find the word ach, it refers to all the vowel sounds, right? So if Panini is using ach, so which letters it will refer to? I and O. Because he takes I as the first letter and Cha as the last letter, so he forms H. So now, to un now you understand here. So at means only a. Then you have i. Then you have o. So in Panini's understanding, in Panini's language, a, i, and o, they should be treated as, or they are known as vriddhi. So Panini gives a name to these three letters, Vriddhi. Okay, so Panini gives a name to these three letters as Vriddhi. Vriddhi means A, I and O. So similarly, the next sutra in Panini after Vriddhi Radhi is
अधेन गुना सो इट इज अधेन गुना द नेक्स्ट सूत्र इज अधेन गुना ना व्हाट डज इट मींस इट मींस अत एन गुना नाउ रिमेम्बर इन द केस ऑफ आथ इट इज द प्योर साउंड आ नॉट इट्स वेरिएशन सिमिलरली हियर अथ रेफर्स टू द प्योर साउंड अ नॉट इट्स वेरिएशन अ कैन हैव फर्दर वेरिएशन एंड एंग इज अनदर एब्रिविएशन सो वट विल बी एंग जस्ट लुक एट द चार्ट एंड देन से एंग A and O. So you see, I even look A O. So A and O are A. So now, how many characters you get from here? Or then, A, A and O. So Panini says that these three letters no as guna. Now throughout the Ashtadhyay, if Panini has to. Employ certain things to a, i, and o. He will use only vridhi. If he has to employ something or speak something about a, a, o, he will use the word guna. Right. So that's how. First, he gives the definition of the word sanya. Right. So you have many many sanya sutras. Like I said, out of the six varieties, Sanya is one variety of sutra. So he defines, he gives the definitions, creates many Sanya sutras. So you have got hundreds of Sanya padas in Panini. This needs to be understood like what is guna, what is vridhi, and sometimes what happens, this when you take these two examples, guna and vridhi. there these two words are there in the natural language also like guna has a meaning vridhi has a meaning but they will have a contextual meaning here these are known as akritrima sanya natural sanya padas akritrima but panini also has created many kritrima sanya many artificial to serve certain grammatical purpose he has created many krutrima sanyas or artificial sanyas like t gu bha this is a single letter they are krutrima artificial sanyas so t means something gu means something bha means something right now sometimes he creates sutras how his sutras become very uh, compact so for example like you have got 10 tenses and moods in panini's term they are like lot lit lut let lot ling long ling lung lung so like this you have got the terms now you see all these terms have a common sound what is that common sound Lot, lit, let, long, long, long. What is the common sound? La. So if Panini has to employ something with regard to all the ten things, so he will simply say lasya. He will not say lotta, litta, lutta. He simply say lasya. So you must understand when Panini is speaking about la. wherever panini has the sound l so it refers to all the 10 ten tenses and moods that's how panini has made it very compact and in a very compact manner he has given you 3995 sutras following which you can derive millions and millions of words okay so this is one of the techniques by making pratyahara there's another technique Which Panini has employed, called anuvritti. Anuvritti. <coughs> so 
सो वट इज अनुवृत्ति अनुवृत्ति मीन्स फॉलोइंग पाणिनी विल नॉट से एव्हरीथिंग इन ए सूत्र ओके फॉर एक्झाम्पल अनुवृत्ती इज ऑल्सो ए मेथड विच वी फॉलो इन अवर डे टू डे लँग्वेज सपोज यू से संजीव जी वन यू गो टू द मार्केट प्लीज ब्रिंग ए रेड पेन फॉर मी दिस इज माय फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट टू हिम ओ येस ऑल्सो अ रेड वन and a blue one now what happens to understand my next statement red one or blue one one need to bring certain things from the previous statement so what is red one a red pen and the request is made to someone and request is made to someone to bring for me so these things will be understood when you do the anuvrutti so panini follows the same technique suppose he has to say so there is a sutra called achascha i mean very difficult again for it will sound greek and latin if i say what is achascha so he makes a rule but there is a rule prior to it where where from if the words hraswa dirgha pluta these three words are not brought into achascha next sutra it will not be understood it will not be complete so that's how you find the anuvrutti method like from the previous sutra a certain portion or the whole sutra will be brought into the next sutra to make it complete so then panini doesn't have to repeat it he he will simply make a rule that look follow the anuvrutti pattern that's one technique another technique so pratyahara is one technique anuvrutti is one technique then you have adhikar now suppose panini is speaking about a whole section now say chapter 7 the entire chapter 7 for example is entirely dedicated to root sounds dhatu in every sutra he is speaking something about the dhatu right now the dhatu word has to be repeated in all the sutras and no repetition is allowed in the sutra style of composition if there is a repetition that marks the end of the composition that's that's again another uh, rule in the sutra style of composition if you go to patanjali's yoga sutra the last sutra will be repeated twice in panini also he ends it with a a this is the last sutra of panini the first sutra is vridhiradaich and the last sutra is a a so there should be no repetition in sutra style of composition so now how is panini going to achieve when he is speaking about dhatu or the root sounds in a whole section now then he follows the adhikara technique adhikara technique means like the first sutra of that section will be something like dhato and that dhato will be repeated in all the sutras in that section so if a certain sutra is repeated is for the employment of its force is repeated in all the sutras in a whole section is called the adhikara now you will find like from this section to this section it is the adhikara sutra it has its own adhikara so adhikara is again like you have got three different types of adhikara it's so beautiful to look at the different techniques which panini has employed there is a ganga pravah adhikara ganga pravah vat that means it's a continuous flow in all the sutras it will be repeated there are certain sutras adhikara sutras which will not be repeated in all the sutras but there is a break so it will be repeated say 
instead of getting it repeated in uh, sutra number 2, 3, 4, 5, so it will get repeated only in the sutra number 6, not in, that's called Manduka Pluti. Manduka Pluti means frog's jump, like a frog jumps, so there is a space in between. So like Manduka Pluti Adhikara, there are certain sutras which will not be Adhikara sutras, which will not be repeated in uh, continuously, but after certain sutra. There is another kind of Adhikara Sutra which is known as Simhavalokita. Do you know how does a lion look? Simhavalokanam. A lion's eye view. So Simhavalokanam means like when a lion goes, so he takes a pause and looks back. Okay. So there will be a certain places in Panini Sastadhyay where one has to look back in order to get the connect that it is connected with this then only the sutra can do the siddhi of certain things so you have got anuvritti you have got adhikara you have got pratyahara then you have got various other techniques for example panini's entire ashtadhyayi is divided as I told you into eight adhyayas and uh, each adhyaya has four sections so total number of section 32 but there is another division of Ashtadhyaya the entire Ashtadhyaya is divided into broadly two parts the first seven chapters and the first section of the eighth chapter this form one part of Ashtadhyaya. They are known as Sapada Ashtadhyaya. Sapada Saptadhyaya. Sapada Saptadhyaya. That means one uh, quarter from the eighth chapter plus seven. Sapada Saptadhyaya. This is one first section. Then you have Tripadi. Tripadi rest of the three paths. Why is it so? Now, if a particular sutra from the tripadi is employed, now look at how the conflict resolution happens in Panini Sastadhyay. Suppose, for the derivation of a particular word or for a particular syntax, now a sutra from Tripadi is employed, yet there is the chance of applying another sutra from the Sapada Saptadhyay. So you find that, okay, now this has happened, for example, how many of you have read Gita? How many of you have read Gita? <coughs> when it comes to the saying of Arjuna, what does it say? It says Arjuna Ubacha. Right? Arjuna Ubaja. <coughs> now, suppose you have Lamba plus Udara. Do you say Lamba Udara? What do you say? Lambodara because a plus u becomes o. Lamba udara becomes lambodara. Vruka udara becomes vrukodara. Okay. <coughs> now why it will not become Arjuna Uvacha? Arjuna Uvacha. It should become Arjuna Uvacha. 
No, it's the same. Like you have Arjuna Uvacha. Why it will not become Arjuna Uvacha? Okay. So now, the base word is Arjuna plus Uvacha. Now by employing a rule, a sutra, from Tripadi, this Visarga is deleted. This Visarga is deleted. Lopa Shaka Lasya. Suppose we take this rule, which belongs to the Tripadi. Now because a Tripadi Sutra is employed, Though there is a possibility of combining A and O further, it will not happen because once a sutra is employed which belongs to the Tripadi section, now from the Sapada, so Sapada Saptadhyay sutra becomes a redundant. It becomes a Siddha to that. And within Tripadi also, like suppose in Tripadi you have a sutra number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that. So for the second sutra, the first sutra is Asiddha. For the third sutra, the first and second are Asiddha. So like this it goes, goes on. Then the last sutra is Asiddha to all. It cannot be employed to any, anything else. So that's another technique which Panini has followed in deriving the sadhu shabdas. Sir, in some texts there is suta uvacha. In there, uh, the, should, should it be suta uvacha? Suta uvacha. Okay. It will be suta uvacha. Because it cannot be suta uvacha. That must be misprinted. Yeah. Suta uvacha. So, you have got the siddha and asiddha. But then, <laughs> coming back to, uh, maybe I'll, I'll end in another two minutes. This is just the introduction. Now you are getting into like what Panini must have thought in his mind while composing. So, there are certain rules. What happens while deriving a particular word? So, a particular sutra is employed. But at the same time, you have got another sutra which is also, you know, making sense that it, it can have its applicability here. So two sutras are coming into play at the same place. So this is a conflict. Okay. It, it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, like two people have occupied one seat at the same time. So who is going to sit on that? It's a conflict situation. So Panini says, Viprati Shedhe, whenever there is a Viprati Shedha like this, Viprati Shedha means Tulya Vala Virodha. Tulya Vala means both the sutras have got the equal force to apply. Tulya Vala Virodha. Viprati Shedhe, he says, Param Karyam. The next rule will take over. So, when you say next rule, one more important thing which needs to be remembered is the numbering of the sutras in Panini. It's extremely important. So when Panini says, like Vruddhi Radhais will be one, one, one. That means it is the first sutra of Panini's first adhyaya and the first section. The sutra number, the section number and the chapter number. So like this, you have to go. The ordering of the sutras cannot be changed. If you just one sutra, you change the order, the entire system becomes corrupt. With so much of care, with so much of meticulousness, Panini has composed this Ashtadhyay. In order to derive all the possible words from a list of 2000 root sounds. There are two additional texts which are the appendix to Ashtadhyay, which are appended to Ashtadhyay. One is called Dhatu Patha, one is called Gana Patha. Dhatu Patha 
contains all the verbal bases. Ganapatha contains around 260 uh, odd ganas, groups, where these are the groups of nouns. So Panini, suppose a particular thing is employed for a certain number of words. Suppose a hundred different words. So what Panini will do in his Ashtadhyay, instead of dealing with every word, so he has made groups. Suppose like we, we make Rishi leaders. So the leader is at the front. So if that name is called, then the whole batch will come with that. So it's like that. So suppose Ajadi Gana. So the Gana beginning with the word Aja. Suppose there are 30 words. So the same rule will be employed for the rest of the 30 words. Right. So like this he has met Dhatu Patha, Gana Patha and Sutra Patha. These three together make Ashtadhyay complete. So and these are the some simple techniques but then again you have the Nitya, Anitya, then you have a Vibhasha, you have Vikalpa, you have Nishedha, Niyama the different kinds of sutras, you have paribhashas, you have atidesa, you have vidhi and every little technical term in Panini needs to be understood carefully so then we can have little entry into Panini's Ashtadhyay. So that's what is a little bit of introduction to what Panini is, what his Ashtadhyay is, how it functions. Now we can imagine like what it takes in order to deal with Ashtadhyay. Okay. Thank you. So, which was the part where uh, Rishi Raj Pohpat had commented? Vipratishede Param Karyam. Okay. That is what is his main claim. So, instead of taking it as para next, so he has created, he means like his supervisors and others, they say, they call it as right and left, which is again creating further problem if you take it right and left of the world. So is there any other traditionalist who has taken this interpretation ever? No. So in that way, he, it is a fanciful new imagination of his. Is he right? Uh, he is disproved by others that if you accept that right left the way he has done, so there are further problems which are created, which he is not aware of. That's how the tradition has been, the Khandana Mandana song. That, that is quite immature on uh, part of media to uh, The claim is immature. But the study approach is fine. He could have studied it. There are so many people doing PhD on Panini, different aspects of Panini. There are so many people studying entirely and dealing with so many articles, so many finely researched articles you will find on Ashtadhyay. But no one has made such a tall claim. And, and did Panini himself uh, claim that he is designing this, creating this whole structure to preserve the meaning of Vedas? Yeah, like, like Panini Sashtadhyayi is dealing with both classical and the Vedic language, the Lokika and Vaidika. So there again, like whenever Panini has to say something about the Lokika Bhasha, Lokika language, he uses the word Bhasha. So you will find Bhasha Yam, right? Bhashaya. Suppose he is using, uh, he is employing certain things for Vaidika, so he uses the word Chandas. Like you have Chandasi Bahulam, like in the Vedic language, this is employed profusely. Chandasi Bahulam. And then in Panini's technique, like another thing, like how the sutras are formed. So suppose you take, uh, this is how most of the sutras you will find, the component A becomes B in the condition of C. Like if you take A, B, C, 
you put it a put an arrow mark becomes b and then put c within the bracket right so it it will, it will be something like a a is b in the condition of c for example like you say there is a sutra Here you have got three words Ikam, Yam, Achi. Now every word is in a particular case. Ika is in sixth case. Yan is in the first case. Achi is in the locative case. And Panini explains, like whenever I am using Shashti, sixth case, know that in the place of, that will be the meaning. When I mean in the place of, so it will be Ika, the sixth case. What will be in the place of that? will be in first case like yarn so in the place of ik yarn will take place like a will become b and whenever panini uses the seventh case like this is also another technique like how is he using the cases so whenever he uses seventh cases locative case it means in the condition of so what does this sutra will mean? Now ik. Ik is an abbreviation. So how many letters you will find in ik? I un ruk. So you find e u r r. Right? E u r r. These four letters. So now you see e u He says in the place of e u r r, yarn will take place. Yarn means haya varat learn. Okay, so now ya va ra la. Now he says in the place of e, there will be ya. In the place of u, there will be va. In the place of ru, there will be ra. In the place of ru, there will be la. When achi, ach means all the vowels, all the vowels. Like if there is a vowel after that. For example, like if you have the word dadhi, and then after that you have patra. Now dadhi ends with e. Patra begins with a, which is a vowel. So now see, after E, if there is a vowel, so in the condition of a vowel coming after that, so what will happen to E and A? So he says that Ya will take place. Now you have Dad, Ya, plus A, Tra. So together you will get Dadhyatra. Similarly, suppose you have a U, then you have, like suppose you say Prabhu Atra or Prabhu Agnya, Prabhu Agnya. So U will be getting replaced for this. Now, this entire thing, all the examples, possible examples, are encoded here in this Eko Yanachi. That's Panini. Simply, he says Eko Yanachi. And then you have got all the examples coming like this. Do you think Panini might be a title that 
No, no, Panini is one person. Yes, Panini is one person. So that's how you you can see like how logical, mathematical, and computational Panini is in his presentation. Also calculative. Okay. Yeah. Before finding, was it same like the It was same. Like these sutras were not there. The sutras were not there. See, Vayakarana comes later to preserve the language or show the language, the functionality of the language. Sutras can come later, it doesn't matter, but the language first. So therefore, Panini, before he became a Vayakarana, he was a Bhasha Vijnani. First, he has to be a linguist. He goes and collects all the words. He is aware of all the words, the entire language. Then only he can give a sutra like this, create a vyakarana like this. Today, universities and all these people are you know, trying so hard to understand the entirety of Sanskrit language. But he kept the entire language in his mind and created these sutras. These things people are using earlier as well, but he only codified them. Yeah, he codified. The language, all the words were in use in language. But the codification, Panini did. Okay. So we close with few seconds of silence. Yes, um, I have heard that Vedic Sanskrit is something different. Yeah, there are differences, but if you know, uh, therefore he, he makes separate rules for the Vedic language. So Vedic Sanskrit um, has, you know, there are many components which are not same like in classical language, yet the same rules are employed to him. So wherever specific rules are needed for the derivation of the Vedic words, so Panini makes separate sections, separate sutras. And uses the word chandas. So in chandas, that's why you say, like in chandas, this is different, you will say. But there is not a huge difference between the languages. If someone knows the Lokika Bhasha, can also understand the Vaidika Bhasha. To a great extent, one can understand. Okay. Ah. Like, uh, there is, uh, Ashtadvaita Sanskrit, Ashtadvaita Sanskrit, Ashtadvaita Sanskrit, Ashtadvaita Sanskrit, Ashtadvaita Sanskrit, Uh, not necessary that there has to be any significance or there may be which I don't know <laughs> all right Oh.